All right, here we go. The Battle for Azeroth expansion can be described as many things, but okay. for the average lore consumer, okay. it can be explained as complicated. While Blizzard yeah. has improved their storytelling immensely over the past That's couple of seems. expansions, Battle for Azeroth was filled with dozens of storylines that can be difficult to follow. It's like, okay, so there's a giant sword in the mm -hmm. world, but there's also this powerful resource also, called Azerite, but there's also this yep. synthetic there's that 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 created by the uh -huh. that to use as an experiment, yep. but he has the Oh wait, also we're fighting he dies, oh no, no. Well, he also I can hear there's a log in the mining rocks on those. They're trying to use these relics to consume all of Azeroth. What the f*** is that thing? Oh, and then- So- We go on a cruise boat and then we fall into also, this giant oh, is here. And hey, look, the giant sword is still in Azeroth. Oh, hey, look, the giant sword is still in Azeroth. And it's also the weird is that for some reason it just dies off. And now Sylvanas all of a sudden it's stupid. And now Sylvanas is free. And, all and, all and now Sylvanas is uber powerful and ripped a hole through space and time to the shadow. Surprise, bitch! How did we get here? Why is Sylvanas so powerful? And out of all of this lore, what is important for you to know to understand what is going on? She's very powerful because of feminism, and that's just, it's its the empowering, uh, it's like a hidden buff, uh, nobody can see it. But yeah, it's because of feminism. And so, uh, I, I just, I, I think obviously like Blizzard does much better telling like larger grand scale stories than the small scale stories, especially in terms of the game, because people don't really play all the small scale stories. And because all the small scale stories have like impact into the larger scale of the uh, the expansion as a whole, I think it becomes very confusing for players because they don't have the ability to understand everything that's going on at the time because they haven't spent a bunch of time watching videos like this or watching novel videos or playing through the, even the quest themselves. On in Shadowlands, well, to answer mm -hmm. those questions we are going to need to go back a couple of expansions. Okay. We're gonna go to the moon. Sylvanas used to be alive, but during the Siege yeah. of Kothalos, she, she was did a kick-ass power slide right in front of Arthas and was turned into a banshee. Yeah. Eventually, she'd become the leader of the Forsaken, and it was her mm -hmm. life's, well, undead life's mission to kill the Lich King for what he did to her. That's right. Jump to the Wrath of the Lich King, and Tyrion forging Guy's and the player asshole. characters kill the Lich King. Yep. They beat his dick off. The problem is, there must always be a Lich King. If the Scourge are Apparently left not. a leader, they'll just swarm across Azeroth in a frenzy. Jeez, I hope so that Bulwark doesn't happen. Dragon chooses to sacrifice himself to be the new Lich King of course. instead. Sylvanas was not able to see Arthas fall firsthand because... I, I guess she was stuck yeah, in she wasn't traffic, there. I guess. And the Banshee Queen ventured to the Frozen Throne after just to make sure that Arthas was dead. He was gone, so I guess he was dead. And the victory was empty for Sylvanas. In her undead life, she was depressed, but <laughs> driven by vengeance. Now, she was just yeah. depressed. So she threw herself off the Frozen Throne onto the spikes below. Not good. Not good at all. In death, Sylvanas yeah. only saw darkness. If only that would have just, like, we could have just ended it right there, and it would have just been done. Everything would have been fine. Uh, Renaming the expansion of Simplands? No, it's not Simplands. What do you mean, dude? In the short story, The Edge of Night, yeah. it's described as, There were others in the darkness. Things she could not recognize, because nothing so terrible could exist in the world of the living. Claws tore at her, but she had no mouth with which to scream. Eyes looked at her, but she could not look back. This was to be her eternity. The endless void, the dark, unknown realm of anguish. That sucks. That sucks, Dick. That sucks, man. We can assume Wait, so does that mean she went- Yeah, she went to the Maw? This horrific reality Sylvanas was in was the Maw. Yeah! A realm in the Shadowlands where irredeemable souls are damned to live in anguish for all eternity. Within the Maw, Sylvanas was offered a deal by nine Valkyrs. Okay. One in which would take her place in the Maw so she could return back to the land of the living which is depicted in this totally not over-sexualized art. Although this wait, wasn't wait, in wait the show, totally not over- Is this actual- is- is this- was this in the game? 
sexualized art. Although was this that, wasn't actually... in the short story, we know that this is when Sylvanas got in contact with an ancient being called the Jailer, also they known just make as that. Lord Avil, is it? Zova. Action. Oh no. Doctor. Evil. Oh, no. The details about Sylvanas and the ruler of the Maw's relationship Shit. is still unknown, but what we do know is they've made a pact with each other. And yeah. every soul that goes into the Maw makes the Jailer and Sylvanas more much more powerful. Yeah, of course. You complete me. I love you. Now oh with a God. hidden motive to make herself oh more powerful, God. Sylvanas is brought back to our reality yeah. to live once more. Wait, that's a toilet? Oh, hey! Yeah. The Cataclysm expansion happens, and nothing is important except for Garrosh calling Sylvanas a bitch. Nothing important happens in Mr. <laughs> there it is, dude. Warlords of Draenor happens, and Somebody gotta truly, say it. everything is pointless. Legion happens, and demons are raging across uh -huh. Azeroth. In the battle for the Broken Shore, the Horde's war chief Vol'jin mm -hmm. is killed by a random fell guard. In Vol'jin, <laughs> it's pretty sad, isn't it? I mean, that's like the that's like the big guy, you know, like. It really was fucking embarrassing. You have, like, these big fucking... Like, at least Tyrion got killed by a boss. Like, Varian got disenchanted by Gul'dan, and Vol'jin literally just died. He just died. Like, it, it sucks, man. Jin's final moments. A mysterious yeah. whisper invaded his mind, compelling him to make Sylvanas war chief in his last dying breath. Turns out, what this a mysterious mistake. whisper was Muzala, a Loa of death who serves the Jailer. That's a stupid... With Sylvanas as war chief, she has a ton of yeah. sway in the fate of Azeroth. That's dumb. But before her plans can be put into motion, we need to defeat the Legion. Yeah, the rest of course. of the expansion involves doing just that. Yeah, they beat the shit out Meanwhile, of Meanwhile, at some point during the end of Legion, the Jailer broke how the Shadowlands works. Uh-huh. Typically, souls are sent to an endless amount of pocket dimensions that suit them best. Mm -hmm. But now, every soul is being sent straight into the Maw, making uh -oh. the Jailer and Sylvanas oh, no. incredibly powerful. Oh no. Also, the ruler of the Burning Legion, Sargeras, stabs a giant sword in Azeroth as he's being defeated. Now, there's a new powerful resource called Azerite, which incentivizes the Horde How and convenient. the Alliance to fight each other. Secretly, Sylvanas' hidden motive is to cause as much death in Azeroth to make her and the Jailer more powerful. I think that's stupid, personally. I feel like Muzala whispering to Vol'jin is like a bad plot device. Yeah, like, I, I don't know, I just, I felt like it was a bad plot device. Like, I, I didn't like it, it was stupid, because, like, it, it just, it, it came out of nowhere, and it just kind of... It makes sense in the story. I, I know that it makes sense in the story, but I feel like whenever you whenever you fool the player, that's not something that I, I'm I, I don't like. I, I don't like being fooled in that way. Because you're making decisions in the game thinking one thing, thinking that you understand everything, and then they reveal that there's something else going on. It's like a big fucking debate. And I, I just wasn't a fan of that. And Vol'jin's the real war chief. That's not something you like. So you do... Wait, what do you mean? It's not a bad plot device? It's lazy writing? I don't know what you want to call it, right? It just... It feels like... It's like, you know, whenever you're, like, a really little kid and, like, you, you're, you like, you know, acting out a story and then it's like, oh, well, I'm not actually a warrior. I'm a fucking angel. And, you know, I can kill you with one hit with my sword. And then, you know, your little brother hits you with a stick and he's like, you have to die now because I'm an angel and you're dead. Like, that's what it feels like this is. That's exactly what it feels like this is. And I don't like it. I feel like it's lazy, it's boring, it's not contextual, and it comes out of nowhere. Like, that, I, that's the, I, I can't believe I came up with that analogy, because that's exactly the way I fucking feel about it. Powerful. Yeah. Stupid. Sylvanas starts the fourth war off with a bang How and commits mass genocide and burns down Teldrassil, giving yeah. her and the Jailer... Power. One million souls. The battle for Lordaeron yeah. happens, and Sylvanas is using chemical warfare on the Alliance and her own troops. Uh-huh. 
Hmm, I wonder why. The expansion continues yep. and we get busy dealing with problems in Zandalar and Kul Taras. The battle for Dazar bon happens Swamby's and the cool. alliance brings like bon fight Swamby. to Zandalari. Sylvanas is nowhere to be seen and King Rostakhan dies. I didn't like King Rostakhan dying. I mean, he had to die. It was just kind of a, uh, it was kind of a disappointment. I don't know. I would have liked to see more of him, especially with like, because the thing is like with King Rostakhan, like people talk about King Rostakhan and like the Zandalari, the islands in Vanilla WoW. I just feel like the character coming into the story after so long and then just only existing in like this very short period of time was kind of disappointing. Now we have Tawanji. Gives a fuck about her. The Night Elves want revenge for Teldrassil, and the battle for Darkshore yeah. happens, and Taronda is especially pissed. The High Priestess yeah. of Elune performs an ancient ritual that involves sacrificing an orc head into a moon well and turns into a night warrior. She's an really avatar mad. of Elune's wrath, and now she is ready to kick ass yeah. during the battle. Taronda yeah. and Malfurion confront two Valkyrs and Nathanos. Oh, oh shit. You guys don't know who Nathanos is. Well, uh, Nathanos is basically... A uh, simp. And why would they have the Valkyr out there fighting? Like, because if the Valkyr is so precious to Sylvanas, why would she have them out there fighting? I don't know, it seems like kind of a... It's a... It's like, you know, whenever you go and... It, it's it's a bad... It's bad logic. Like, for example, um... Fucking is shit writing? Yeah, it's like, you know whenever you're playing Age of Empires 2 and you have like your king, you don't actually bring your king into the battle. You put their king in like fucking five different walls so nobody can get to him. So like, yeah, like what the fuck would you do that for? Why would you send him out in the battle? Uh, Sylvanas is a tier 3 the sub henchman who is literally just a dead guy with a bow. You okay. would think yeah. that two demigods versus a dead guy with a bow would yeah. go something like this. <laughs> but in reality, Nathanos puts up a fight and yeah. it ends with one of the Valkyrs dying and he goes, Witch! You shall pay dearly for that. Let's move! And she doesn't and shoot him with an arrow away. or anything. This is literally my least favorite event that's ever happened in Warcraft history. The it, Night is, it is really stupid. To be fair, it is really, really stupid. Uh, ten Searcher and Kings ran into the battlefield to inspire their men. You're right. And do you know what the fucking lifespan for those guys was? It was like probably 35. Okay? Like, that's why, you know, later on... They stopped doing that because it just didn't work too well for him. Read the text. Okay, let me read the text real quick. That's ever happened in Warcraft. Are you really going to tell me two of the strongest characters in all of Warcraft can't kill Nathanos, Tyrande can call down lasers from the fucking moon, and Malfurion was the first druid ever and is ultra-powerful? Yeah, but you missed the part where the other guy had a bow. See, that's the part Platinum's not remembering. You see, the other guy had a bow, so uh, there's no way for them to be able to handle it. Blood armor? Well, he had a bow, too. I mean, come on. History. The Night Elves win the battle and reclaim Darkshore unceremoniously. Yeah. Back on the continent of Kul Taras, there are some Naga that are trying to consume all of Azeroth in a giant storm, so we go kill them. Aid your faithful servant, almighty Nazar! <laughs> At the end of the raid, a Bitch. mysterious blade called Zalatath appears. Four yeah. players take it and give it to Sylvanas. That's Sylvanas a good idea. Sylvanas uses the blade to strike a deal with Queen Ajara, who she got in contact with by calling her on the phone or teleporting there or something. Yeah. Here's what you need to know. Wait, what? Queen Ajara, Sylvanas, and the Zoth are not working together. It's What? So Ashara made a deal with Sylvanas? I thought I thought Sylvanas made a deal with Helia. Wait, she made a deal with with both of them? I think she's a lesbian. Nathanos would not be that mad. Think about how mad Nathanos is all the time. He would not be that mad if he was getting anything out of it. On top of that, how is it that Sylvanas just happens to be making these secret deals with all the other large female characters in the, in the story? 
Like you, you putting together, you picking up what I'm putting down here. I, I'm just saying, like large man. Well, I mean, yeah, they're 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 physically big, but I mean, like large important characters in the story. Like, if it comes out about, yeah, this could happen, man. This could fucking happen. More like they're all schemers who think they themselves benefit most from this alliance. Yeah. The plan is, the Horde and the Alliance fall into Nashitar. Queen Ashara will then coerce them into the Eternal Palace. And I really think Queen Ashara could have been way hotter if they gave her bigger boobs. Like, I think she could have, like, because she's already really, really hot. But if they gave her, like, some fucking, like, mega milkers, oh my fucking god, dude. Like, that would have been the best character in the whole story. Like, people would have completely not even given a fuck about the fact that she was, uh, she got resurrected. Uh, or not resurrected, but she just got let go in, like, uh, Nylotha. People would be happy because then they'd, knew that, they'd know that they'd see her again in the game. Like, that's exactly it, man use their hearts of Azeroth to unleash like Nazoth from his prison. That didn't happen. Then, she will drive Zalatath into the Old God. Yep. Killing him and finally freeing herself from her master. Sylvanas benefits from this interaction by having all the Horde and the Alliance champions dead. How about that? What Sylvanas and Ajara don't know is Nazoth is the old god of infinite truths and can foresee all possible futures. He has been manipulating this event behind the scenes and knows Ashara will fail and he will be unleashed. This is the empire I have built. Well, it's like, obviously, like, I don't think that... Yeah, of course, Nazoth is literally like, look at, look at this, okay? He's literally a five head. Really, he is. Like, Nazoth is literally a five head. There's no way that anybody was going to outsmart this thing. Like, she, she's stupid for even thinking, like, this is like, you can't outsmart the fucking old god. Present. Yeah, he just know he knows everything. Future. Like. But that is just the plan. What really happens yeah. is Horde adventurers sail towards Nashatar because uh -huh. Nagas are bad and we need to kill them. And the Alliance follows closely behind of course. because... Nagas and are Horde are bad, so we need, we to, need kill to, them. to kill them. There it Both is. Both factions fall right into Ajara's trap, and she becomes Fish Moses and parts the sea. <laughs> she achieves this by using the Tide Stone yep. of Golgoneth. Tide Stone. That might ring a bell for you. Ooh. Back in Legion, we used the Tide Stone in the Tomb of Sargeras. Yeah. I guess we just forgot about this incredibly yep. powerful artifact and Queen Ajara just waltzed into the tomb of Sargeras Surprise! and took it. Look, oh, I understand him. this lore isn't important for you to understand Shadowlands, but it's also just completely batshit insane and I feel like I need to tell you about it. Anyways. I think they probably should have had Ashara do it with like magic or something because it would indicate that she was really powerful. Because like, it, it would give people like a sense of like how powerful Ashara was if she could have done it all on her own. Like, that would have been smarter for them to do than for them to just create this, like, weird plot device to make it happen. The Horde and the Alliance are now stranded on Najatar's ocean floor and need to learn how to survive. Thankfully, the Alliance and Horde have fish people who somehow can breathe out of the water to help them. Also, yeah, Nathanos course. has Zalatath and needs to deliver it to Queen Ajara behind the Horde's back. Uh -huh. And this happens off screen. All right, everyone. We need to remain united and work together as a team. Therissa, find a safe haven so we can gather our troops. Blightcaller, orga... What's he doing? Blightcaller, where are you What's, going? Where's he going? I, uh, oh, I, I was just... Uh, he's I'm, gotta go I'm, do uh, something. I'm going for a walk. You, you know, need, need some fresh air. But we are in an extremely hostile environment. Those Naga this will so surely ridiculous. rip you to shreds. I, uh... Um, this is so uh, fucking ridiculous, look, dude. Azerite, where? 
Wow. Thanos delivers the blade to Ashara and we go into her palace and somehow she didn't expect the Horde and the Alliance to work together despite us working together again and again for the past 15 years. Yeah. Ashara is defeated but Nazoth is released from his prison and pulls Ashara into the darkness. While all of this is going on, uh -huh. there's also a subplot about Sylvanas raising Derek Proudmore, kidnapping Bane Bloodhoof, and wanting to burn down Thunder Bluff. This plotline culminates in the Horde and the Alliance forces marching to the gates of Orgrim. How did Thrall grow his hair back? Like, do you guys ever wonder about that? Like, how the fuck did that ever happen? Like, because it's like you could see, like, his hairline was clearly not there. It's not like, oh, he just shaved his head. No, his hairline was clearly fucked up. And, and then the cinematics happen. Fenster raid? Well, I, I don't know. Like, are there hair elementals in the game? I, I guess there must be. Are to stop Sylvanas. I'm not talking yeah. about any of this plot because it all gets resolved in BFA. And uh, this video is already way too complex with the story elements I am explaining. Yeah, it is. What you need to know is Sarfang is an old orc and he wants to die an honorable it's death. An old man. He challenges Sylvanas to a duel. Sylvanas is frustrated because her plan is falling apart and she says, The Horde is nothing. That's exactly you what she said. Nothing. Also, guess who wins the duel? After this outburst, Sylvanas is obviously not the war chief anymore, and she flies away like a yeah. villain. Sylvanas then hangs out in the Ghostlands, sulks, I guess so. and explains her plan. My bargain with Ajara will yet bear fruit. Uh huh. The armies of Azeroth will fight her master, and he will line their streets with corpses. In the end, he too will serve death. So Sylvanas' plan was for Enzoth to kill everyone on Azeroth, and then she will enslave Enzoth. I think that, uh, I don't think that's what it was. I think that she knew that Nazoth was going to die, or they'd be able to beat him, but he'd kill a lot of people in the process. Like, that's kind of what I, I expected, but okay. It doesn't really matter one right. way or another. This marks the end of the yeah. Fourth War, and the Horde and the Alliance are best friends again. Aww, that's good, dude. Look at that. Enzoth's grand plan after being released is trapped in two old zones no yep. one cares about, and with the help from stupid sexy Rathion, we enter Enzoth's home called Nihilotha. Of course. Dude, I feel like this raid wasn't it, it, it like I expected Nylotha to just be like I don't know, it wasn't as fucking grandiose as I had expected. Like I had expected this to be like uh like Argus or something like that. Like Nylotha just yeah, it's like just this massive like a zone with like a raid built into it. It just it didn't feel the way that it should have. And I don't even really entirely know why. I think it just might just be my opinion on it, though. In Nihilotha, we help Queen Ajara, who is being tortured. Ajara Stop says it. thanks by pulling Zalatath out of her butt and giving it to Rathion. Then she kind of just exits stage left, and we don't hear from her again. Yeah, Rathion how's that happen? uses Zalatath to open a hole in the Zoth, and we defeat him by shooting mm -hmm. a giant laser beam. He might not actually be dead. His essence might be in Zalatath, but uh, yeah, who knows? Yeah, I don't knows? know how that what works. What we do know is Azeroth is now purified of all corruption, wow. and somehow I just explained all of BFA without talking about Magni. Wait. So all the... Wait, all the corruption's gone? Like, so what about... What what about Yogg? Yogg's dead. They retconned him to be dead? Damn, well that's convenient. Okay. In the book Shadows Rising, a lot of stuff happens. All you yep. need to know is the Horde and the Alliance are looking for Sylvanas. Sylvanas also ordered Nathanos to kill Bomb Swambi because he's been stopping troll souls from entering the Maw. Shut What you doing here, man? It's not your time to pass on. <laughs> Yet. I'm sending them to the troll afterlife, which is called the Other Side. Nathanos fails in killing Bobby Salami like the loser he is. Well, a fucking, of course he would, of course he would fail. Like, what the fuck do you mean? He's a one dude. Bob Salami's like a Loa. 
That's, uh, yeah, there's no way he's gonna, he's not gonna win just to knock me out back. Okay, did you wash your hands while I wash my hands? I got a clean dick. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sylvanas is conducting phase two of her master plan. Oh, phase two. Man. King rules forever. Shit. What the fucking shit you done the mark for? Playing your fucking mouth, mate, my bro, man. You sent me a message first, yeah? I live in Smevic, Birmingham. If you want the fucking bro, come down to Smevic, that's for Danny G. I'm gonna make a message, and I'll take a fucking LA. You know what the Yeah. Dude, Bulbar could have been so cool as a witch hunter too. Yeah, he could have been so and fucking bad. Bulbar gets his ass kicked. Stupid as fuck, man. Damn. With the Helm of Domination destroyed, Damn. the barrier between the Shadowlands is obliterated. That was really cool, though, to be fair. Like, I know that we, uh, you know, don't have a lot of good things to say about that cinematic, but the shit where she breaks it in half and then, like, it, it's like everything happens, you know? Like, that was pretty fucking cool. Th to be fair, that actually was cool. Allowing the Jailer and yeah. his minions direct influence in our plane How of convenient. existence. How uh. convenient. Also, since there's no Lich King, the Scourge have gone in a frenzy and Azeroth has a cherry on top. Yeah, but First, they're only level 80, we need to so we'll be able to kill them now. Scourge infestation, and then Wait, we need to shit, we're gonna be level 50! Into this unknown realm. We're gonna die! Oh no! Fuck, I didn't think about that! Boros. With all of BFA's story mm. out of the way, what is going on Wait, in Shadow? He didn't talk about Jaina. He didn't talk about Rastakhan. He didn't talk about uh, uh, what's Cali and Minithil. He didn't talk about uh, yeah. He what? What about all the other plot lines? What about every? Oh, you just fuck. Does that even matter? Who gives a shit, dude? Oh, all the lore you need to know. Okay, I didn't even read that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, makes sense now. Lance. Well, yeah. there's an ancient being called the Arbiter. This right. entity judges all souls that enter the Shadowlands and directs mm -hmm. them to their appropriate afterlife. Of course. If you live a selfless life where you sacrifice yourself for others, you go to Bastion. Yeah. If you live the life of a mighty warrior who values strength, you go to Maldraxxus. There it is. If you live a sinful, wicked life, you go to Revendreth to repent Ooh. for your sins. And if you live a life with a connection to nature, you go to Ardenweald to help in the process of rebirth. Unless you're Ursoc and then you just get fucking, just, just fucking dude, just get rid of you, dude, because it's, you know, it is what it is. Like, yeah, except if that happens. These are just four of the limitless dimensions yeah. within the Shadowlands. But the issue is, mysteriously, the Arbiter has ceased to function causing all the souls to drain directly into the Maw. Within Not the good. Maw, there is a constant flowing slipstream of Not souls. Not good. Filled with the cries of ghostly agony as they are damned to feed the unsatiable hunger of the Jailer. Yup. What is... What is totally he... Totally random side tangent here. Back in Hellfire Citadel, there was a boss called Gorefiend who gorged on so many Draenei souls yeah. that he became this obese monstrosity. I think okay. Shadowlands would have been much better if the Jailer oh. was just like sitting at the end of the slipstream and he was just like this <laughs> just giant, huge fat guy, Jabba the Hut looking dude, and he was all like, Get in my belly! Since all the souls are going. <laughs> that probably would have actually been better. 
<laughs> Just like big old fat boy. <laughs> Bring that soul over here, man. I'm hungry again. Yeah, it probably would have made it a little bit funnier. Into the Maw, every other dimension in the Shadowlands is starved of anima. Yeah. Anima is the life source every being has when they die. The more experiences you have in life, the more anima you produce. Experiences like your first kiss, oh. your big promotion at your job. So I'd have no anima. Killing a shit ton of orcs. Okay, I have And a smashing bit. the like button on your favorite YouTuber's oh video. Also, God. subscribe. Okay. All of these experiences okay, dude. fill your soul with okay, anima. Dude. And for everything to function in Shadowlands, these dimensions need it. But yeah. with the jailer gobbling it all up, all of the other zones are in a drought, and we as the player characters are there. And they're help. fighting over it. I think that's what happens. And that is all the lore you need to know to start your adventure in the Shadowlands. That's actually I'll a pretty be good video. More detailed videos about the lore and the expansion. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty good video. I okay. Hope you guys are excited as I am, and I'll see you later. God damn! What the hell's going on over there, dude? Holy shit. Okay, well, you know what? Th this video was really good. I liked it a lot. Uh, I I obviously, it's kind of weird how how it happened. You know, well, it got delayed. Yeah, there you go. Oh, so we put out the video expecting for people to watch it for the expansion release, and now the shit got delayed. Uh, yeah, this was obviously really good. Watch the end. Okay, I'll watch it till the end. It's not really a home. Thank you. I'm so glad that we watched the rest of that. Yeah, I, I'm so, so absolutely glad that we watched that. Yeah, that's great, man. Uh, thank you so much for making me do that.